In the following tutorial, we are going to break down the Pac-Man module, the part of the project, that controls the player character. We will walk through how it moves, animates, checks for collisions, and gets drawn on the screen. This is a great example of how to structure game objects in Lua, using Love 2D. We start by creating a table called Pac-Man, and we set its index to itself. In Lua, the double underscore is used to tell Lua how to handle lookups for missing keys in a table. By setting it to the table itself, we allow any instances of Pac-Man to access shared functions, enabling object-oriented behavior. Next, we define a new function for creating new instances of Pac-Man. This function takes three parameters x, y, and radius. Inside, we use setMetaTable to associate the new instance with the Pac-Man table, which gives it access to all Pac-Man methods. We initialize the properties x, y, and radius, along with default values for speed, angle, mouth timer, and mouth open. The new function essentially acts as a constructor for creating a new Pac-Man object. Next, we have an update function. This function is responsible for updating the Pac-Man instance's state over time. It takes dt, the delta time, as a parameter, which helps to make the game frame rate independent. We use mouth timer to track how much time has passed. Every 0.2 seconds, we toggle the mouth open state, making Pac-Man's mouth either open or close. After toggling, we reset the mouth timer back to zero, so the process repeats. This creates the visual effect of Pac-Man opening and closing his mouth periodically. Now, we have the move function, which controls Pac-Man's movement based on the input direction. It takes several parameters. Direction, which indicates the desired direction of movement. DT, the delta time for frame rate independent movement. Obstacles, to check if Pac-Man collides with any obstacles, and the screen's width and height to ensure Pac-Man stays within bounds. If the game is one true, the function simply returns, stopping any movement. Then, we initialize next x and next y to Pac-Man's current position, preparing to update them based on the direction.
we check the direction that Pac-Man is supposed to move. If the direction is up, we update Pac-Man's next Y position by subtracting the speed multiplied by the delta time. This ensures that Pac-Man moves upwards. We also set Pac-Man's angle to 1.5 times pi, which corresponds to a movement angle pointing upwards, since we are using radians for the angle. If the direction is down, we update Pac-Man's next Y position by adding the speed multiplied by the delta time. This ensures that Pac-Man moves downwards. We also set Pac-Man's angle to half of pi, which corresponds to a movement angle pointing downwards, since we are using radians for the angle. If the direction is left, we update Pac-Man's next X position by subtracting the speed multiplied by the delta time. This ensures Pac-Man moves towards the left. We also set Pac-Man's angle to pi, which corresponds to a movement angle pointing left, as we are using radians for the angle. Finally, if the direction is right, we update Pac-Man's next X position by adding the speed multiplied by the delta time. This ensures Pac-Man moves towards the right. We also set Pac-Man's angle to zero, which corresponds to a movement angle pointing right, as we are using radians for the angle. Now, we check if Pac-Man will collide with any obstacles at the next position. We use the is colliding function, passing in the next x and y positions along with Pac-Man's radius. If there is no collision, we update Pac-Man's position to the new values. This ensures that Pac-Man moves only when it is safe and does not overlap with obstacles. Finally, we ensure that Pac-Man stays within the screen boundaries. We use the MathMax and MathMin functions to restrict Pac-Man's position. For the X position, we make sure that Pac-Man does not move past the left or right edge of the screen by keeping it within the screen width minus its radius. Similarly, for the Y position, we prevent Pac-Man from moving past the top or bottom edge of the screen by keeping it within the screen height minus its radius. We set the color to yellow using Love Graphics Set Color.
This will make Pac-Man appear yellow when drawn on the screen. Then, we define mouth angle, which changes based on whether Pac-Man's mouth is open or closed. When Pac-Man's mouth is open, we set the angle to one-fourth of the value of pi. If the mouth is closed, we set the angle to a very small value, almost zero. This helps control how wide Pac-Man's mouth is. Next, we calculate the start and end angles for Pac-Man's mouth. The start angle is the current direction of movement plus the angle for the mouth. The end angle is the start angle plus a full circle minus the mouth angle to ensure the mouth closes properly. To draw Pac-Man's mouth, we use the arc function to create a filled arc. We specify the position where the mouth should be drawn using Pac-Man's x and y coordinates. The radius of the arc is the same as Pac-Man's radius. The start and end angles define the width of the mouth based on the calculations we made earlier. We set the color to a semi-transparent black with an alpha value of 0.3. Then, we draw an ellipse to represent Pac-Man's shadow. The shadow is drawn slightly below Pac-Man by adjusting the y-coordinate by half of Pac-Man's radius. The width of the shadow is 1.5 times Pac-Man's radius and the height is 0.4 times Pac-Man's radius, creating a stretched oval shape. Now, we set the color back to black. Then, we draw a polygon to represent Pac-Man's mouth. The polygon is created with four points. The center of Pac-Man, defined by self X and self Y, and two additional points calculated using the start and end angles. These points are determined by the cosine and sine of the start and end angles multiplied by Pac-Man's radius, which places the points around the circular boundary of Pac-Man's body, effectively forming the mouth. The fill option ensures that the mouth is filled with black color.
Now, we set the color to a darker gray. Then, we draw an outline of Pac-Man's mouth, using the arc function. This arc is drawn around the center of Pac-Man with the same radius as the body and spans between the start and end angles. The line option ensures that only the outline of the mouth is drawn rather than filling it. Finally, we define a function called getPosition. This function returns Pac-Man's position and radius. It gives us access to Pac-Man's current x and y coordinates, as well as the size of the Pac-Man object, which can be useful for other parts of the game like collision detection or movement logic. At the end of the module, we return the Pac-Man table. This makes the Pac-Man class available to be used in other parts of the game, allowing us to create instances of Pac-Man, move them around, and draw them on the screen. By returning Pac-Man, we enable the rest of the game to interact with the Pac-Man class and its functions.